these um, basically our talks today are uh, centering around energy and mitochondria and um, I think one of the talks is going to deal with some uh, light issues and energy and, um, and Dr. Schellenberger I think will be dealing with some interesting tests to determine mitochondrial function when he comes. What I'm going to do today is um, is probably share with you uh, some research that's, um, that I discovered when I visited the World Mitochondrial Foundation meetings. And um, uh, at those meetings, there was a large number of people there that had children that had been born with deletions in their mitochondria and had severe disease. And uh, they were trying to find ways to counter those diseases because they were genetic and they were passed on to their offspring and it was a problem for these, these folks. And happened to, a few of them happened to be wealthy and they started a foundation and they've been working on that. And they're, they're going to meet this year in Indianapolis. But, they, but because of, of this group, I met a fellow named Dr. Weissig, who is a German fellow who now works in the Harvard system doing research on actually transplanting mitochondria DNA. And so I'm going to share with you some of his work that I heard personally. And um, it was really interesting. After I came home and I was playing his tape, I heard myself asking questions. And I didn't realize they were so dumb until I thought about them for a while. But anyway, um, we're going we're gonna to deal with that. And then the other, by the way, I'm not trying to discourage anybody from asking questions. I actually would like to see that toward the end of my talk because I, it helps me understand what I haven't clarified. And, and I would like to be, have the opportunity to do that if I have enough time. Uh, I'd like to give you a little bit of my background. Um, I worked as an assistant um, professor in family practice for a while, started a family rec practice residency program, um, ran a company for a while as a CEO in solar energy in some areas there, been practicing for the last 25 years in a family practice in a rural area where I could do uh, research and not have to deal with the powers to be around me. So there, it's not too far from the university and, and I've kept in touch with them and um, I've, we're actually uh, I'm right now planning a think tank with the dean of the medical school at UK because Kentucky, as most of you probably know, but you may not know, is the sickest place on earth. There's no place to beat us. I mean, we're number one in heart disease, we're number one in cancer, we're number one in Caucasian obesity, and we're, if we're not number one in Caucasian diabetes, it's because nobody, one stater hasn't done its math because it's the only thing keeping us from being choosing that as, our, as, a, as a part of being famous. But I sat through three Coronary Valley meetings uh, over the years when I was a professor there, uh, assistant professor there, and those Coronary Valley meetings were brought in people from all over the world trying to decide why West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Upper Louisiana, and Queens, New York, of all places, had such high rates of disease, especially heart disease. And we had three of those meetings, and nobody came up with the answer. Uh, of course, I, I would like to tell you I have the answer now, but I think I have the answer. I'm not going to share it with you right now because I'm I got two or three more things to look into, but I will tell you that it turns out to be a unique genetic connection. And I'll give you a little clue. Uh, Queens, New York had um, Irish people that came over in 1800 after a famine and settled in Queens. And um, before we became a country, the King of England dropped their Robin Hoods, which were Scottish Irish who'd gone through famines and had nothing to eat and were getting the, queen, the King's. Uh, I guess elk and deer and all that, and so they started round, rounding them all up and they put them on boats and they dropped them in the Carolinas. And from the Carolinas they came over and got caught in the mountains and, and were not diluted. There wasn't too many other people went in the mountains, and so they, as they came out of the mountains their genetics was pretty well concentrated. And then they came and, and they migrated south. And the reason Upper Louisiana, not Lower Louisiana, is because of the French settled Lower Louisiana. Remember we got the French, we bought the Louisiana Purchase from the French. So as you look at those, at those issues, you start to see the genetics involved because when you look at the s sickest country on earth, it's, U it's the universe, I mean, it's U U.S. There's no place sicker than we are for chronic diseases. But the second sickest place on earth is Australia, and they became the drop point for Scottish-Irish after, after we became a country. So I'll leave it at there, and we'll go in this for the moment. There's, and... This, this talk I've worked on for just two months uh, in reality, but I brought together a lot of things I'd worked on for years, and uh, especially some of my research in, in, in the mitochondrial 
diseases such as metabolic syndrome, which encompasses, as you know, a lot of issues like diabetes and neuropathy and all kinds of issues. Um, but we'll start here. The Achilles, the Achilles heel of the organism, of course, is the mitochondria DNA. And the reason for that is many, but one of them is that that's where all the heat is, and the heat destroys um, the mitochondria itself. And so we go down, we're going to introduce to you, though, the technological breakthroughs on mitochondria repair and replacement, and we're going to focus on the mitochondria DNA being at risk for oxidative damage and the protective interventions that can be utilized with measurable metabolic outcomes. And this is where some of my research is, is in the second one. But the first one's the most exciting. And the reason it's the most exciting is because I predict, and this is, I'm probably, I'm, I've predicted things like this before and I was, I've been wrong. I've been too quick. But from what I see them doing and the progress that they have made, I predict in five to 10 years that we'll be bringing people in and putting IVs in their arm and fixing their mitochondria. And we'll be turning people from diabetes back to non-diabetic and people with abdominal obesity and all the problems with, with uh, cortisone elevation for lack of activated cofactors will then be starting to be reversed. And, it's, and, and we won't reverse the damage by any means, but we'll start reversing the metabolism anyway. And we'll start to prevent it from happening in those people that we test. Um, here's a mitochondria that's, that's basically been photographed, micro photographed. And I just pointed out to you on this one, uh, most of the work that's being done at the energy formation level is between the membranes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the membranes, uh, as you see, is a two-layer membrane around the mitochondria, and the Christi run in from the membranes, and, and they are, are double-layer membranes also. So most of that work occurs in those areas. And, and you'll find that that's the areas that get oxidized the most, and that's where um, near there, of course, will be DNA and those are, and that can also um, become oxidized. This, this is a good graph here for you, and the reason it's a good graph, if you look at glycolysis, most of you know what glycolysis, glycolysis is, and, and glycolysis is basically getting, making some energy about one eighteenth, I think, or one, no, it's one, one fifteenth, I think it is, one fifteenth amount of energy that your electron transfer system will make in the end. But it makes some energy, and it creates, if, it, if the peruvic acid that you're looking at there, um, if that peruvic acid um, cannot get into that Crip cycle, then it will make lactic acid, and it will make low CO2. So as, as you folks look at your CO2, start thinking about mitochondrial function in the future. Because if you don't have pulmonary disease, and you don't have a, a diabetic ketoacidosis, or you don't have kidney disease, or something like that, but you've got people with low, low CO2, you've got you've to start thinking about mitochondrial disease in the sense that it's, that it's uh, not been effective at producing energy. Um, as we go through the Krebs cycle, you'll see that the Krebs cycle is the next step, and it produces some ATP, but most of the ATP is produced in the electron uh, transfer, transport chain and the oxidative phosphorylation system. This is, this is a chloroplast, and I, I got it because it's nice and colored. You try to get an try, try uh, animal complex to show up like this really hard. But, but chloroplasts are the same as our electron transfer system. The only difference is they get light energy. They make sugar using their complexes. We take sugar. We make ATP using the sugar. They use light to make the ATP, and then they turn around and use the ATP to make sugar. But that, that's the only difference. But as you see here, there's what we call a photosystem, I'll blow it up for you, photosystem two and then your cytochrome uh, uh, complex and then your photosystem one and then your ATP complex is the purple over here on the edge. Th th this whole system is basically a system of oxidative phosphorylation of actually creating a battery, a battery in a sense is what it really is when you think about it. And that battery allows those electrons to be charged and we catch those electrons in our ATP. And so that's, that's the, um, probably the essence of that. Everybody knows about the Crip cycle. I did leave some things off on this Crip cycle, and I want to point them out to you. They're in the, if you look in the Crip cycle, you'll see two or three metals. And one of them is, is a ferric metal, Fe, and another one is magnesium, and another one is manganese. Those three metals are absolutely necessary for energy to be formed, but also these five vitamins at the top are necessary. And those five vitamins, if they are not present, the mitochondria does not function well. 